Yo, what's going on guys? This is Bernie again and this is tutorial number 10. I am running out of fingers, but in this tutorial we're going to be talking about Passport JS's Facebook login strategy. Okay, so the first thing in this tutorial is to get our credentials from Facebook. So I want you to go to developers.facebook.com um, and click on the My Apps uh, tab. The next thing you're going to do is click and add a new app. We're going to create a website. Um, we're just going to do OAuth uh, application. Test. Create a new Facebook app ID. Um, this is not a test version of another app, and we'll just choose uh, communication. Uh, this will take just a moment to create our uh, app ID. And while we're waiting, um, actually, we'll just go ahead and skip the quick start. So there's a couple things we're going to need. This is the first thing, the app ID and the app secret. But first, we're going to go to our uh, settings here. We're gonna to have to add an email address, so I'm gonna use mine, bernarelli at gmail.com. Go ahead and save changes there. Then we're gonna to go to status and review, and uh, do you wanna make this app uh, live and all of its features available to the general public? We're gonna just go ahead and click yes. Confirm that. Now let's go back to dashboard and the two things and of course I'm going to delete this app after the tutorial those so these credentials will not work for you uh, but I want you to know uh, that these are the credentials that we'll, we'll be using so I can show you my app secret because I'm not going to use it and it's going to be deleted. Uh, so starting off uh, we have our app ID and an app secret and I'll tell you what we're going to do about that next. So the next thing to do is install our Passport Facebook module uh, using NPM. So let's do uh, NPM install passport-facebook, save that, and go ahead and let that install. The next thing we're going to do is add a file to add our uh, Facebook credentials in. So in config folder, I want you to add a new file. Um, we'll go ahead and save that as auth.js. And it is going to have a module, oh well, module.exports and then equals, and it's going to be an object with a uh, Facebook auth. And that Facebook auth has three uh, different elements in its object, and it's going to be client ID, and those will, like this. And then we'll have some credentials there. And then it's going to have client secret and some credentials there. And then callback URL and some credentials here. Okay, let's go ahead and populate these fields. Our app ID in Facebook is going to get copied and pasted into our client ID here. Our app secret is going to be copied and pasted into our client secret here. And then for callback URL, we're going to create a route uh, for a Facebook to call back to once it gives us whether or not uh, that patient is uh, authenticated. Um, so we're going to create a new, we're going to create a route here in a second, but this will be the link to it. It'll be, uh, in this case, local host uh, 8080. And then auth Facebook callback. So that's telling Facebook when uh, it responds, it's okay and it's secure to uh, send data back to our local host auth Facebook callback. Okay, so next let's go find out how to configure our routes. Uh, so if you go to, if you Google Facebook Passport, you're gonna see Passport for Facebook uh, as the first option here. I want you to go ahead and go down on the, the very first page that pops up, go down to routes. Uh, so you can see here that we're gonna need two routes. First is the route that is needed to, uh, when you click on our page that says login with Facebook, it's gonna direct us to this path, uh, uh, route. The next um, route is uh, used as a callback function from Facebook. So Facebook is gonna be the one that's going to be executing this route. They'll, they'll uh, take our request, they'll process it, make sure that the user is authenticated and, give, uh, and has given permission for our app to access uh, or log in with Facebook. And then uh, Facebook will return the request to our servers and say, yes, they're logged in, here's their credentials, and here's any information that you've requested from them. 
Okay, let's do a little cleanup in our routes.js file. We're gonna go ahead and delete this route since we're no longer using it. We'd only use that for testing reasons. And then let's just go ahead and copy uh, this information from uh, the Passport.js uh, uh, website and paste it in. We can go ahead and delete the comments. We don't need them for right now. We can comment our own code later. And then we're gonna adjust two different things. The success uh, redirect will actually redirect to our profile page and the failure redirect will actually redirect to our home directory. Um, of course, the original, uh, the first route is the one that we will be, or the user will click on, which will direct them to Facebook. And the second route, uh, this one will be the one that Facebook sends them back to our website on. Okay, so the next thing to do is to set up our strategy for logging into Facebook with Passport. So we're going to go to our config file for Passport. Uh, the first thing we need to do is actually import our config file for our auth. Uh, so we're gonna do a var um, config auth equals require, um, and then what was it? our same directory in the auth.js file. So now we have access to all of that information that we saved in the auth file here. Okay, so uh, next let's go ahead and make a new um, strategy. First off, we'll just go ahead and copy this one for reference and paste it in here. Now let's see what we need to change. The first thing, of course, we need to change is our client ID, our client secret, and our callback URL. Uh, so uh, using what we've already declared above is our um, config auth, config auth dot Facebook um, auth dot client ID. That will be our ID. And then config auth dot Facebook auth dot uh, client secret and then down here we'll have one more and that was config auth dot Facebook auth dot uh, callback URL so we'll save that and move on before moving any further with our strategy, we need to go back and update our models uh, file in user.js to include our model for Facebook users. So a local user can log in with the username and password. That's all they need, or that's all they have. Uh, for uh, Facebook users, we need to make a Facebook um, section, and it is going to be an object that is filled with an ID, um, and that ID is going to be a string. And then the next part is a token that they'll have that's unique for this application. Um, and that will be a string. And then they're gonna have an email address, of course, which will be a string. And then they're also going to have a name. And that will be a string. So we can go ahead and save that file and uh, go back to our strategy. Okay, back in our strategy, uh, in our passport.js file, uh, we need to do some editing. First off, we're gonna go ahead and delete this from here, and we're going to do the same as we did up in our local login, which was uh, process.nextTick, which is, I, I explained was a node.js uh, function for asynchronous, waits for data to come back before continuing, basically. Um, process.nextTick, um, and that's gonna be a function. And this is where we'll put all of our uh, information for accessing uh, the database, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do, this is a, a Mongo database uh, function, or it's actually a mongoose function, the, the module that we're using to access our Mongo database. So it's gonna be user uh, dot find one, and that's going to take in, uh, the first thing is gonna be, it's going to be looking for our Facebook dot id okay and it wants to match that to the whatever is returned is going whatever is returned from facebook is going to be restored in profile uh, so we want to look at profile dot id okay and then um if it finds something or whether if it doesn't it's going to return use this function the first is an error if it doesn't find anything and the next is a user okay 
the error happens if actually it can't connect, not whether or not they can find a user. Okay, so um, what are we gonna put inside this function? The first thing is if there's an error, we want to return done, which is the callback. This is the callback with the error itself, okay? Next, um, if there is a user, we want to return to the callback uh, done with null is the error, so there's not an error, and the user, okay? Return all the information back to him. Okay, else, um, else means that uh, there is not a user found uh, in our database, so we need to create one. So let's do this, else, um, we'll create a var that's a new user, and equals new user. Then we're going to say new user dot Facebook dot ID equals profile dot ID. New, let's just copy this. Paste this here. Instead of the, uh, the next one is gonna be token equals the token that we're given up here. It's actually a f access token. Uh, yeah, access token. Uh, the next part will be the name. So that's going to equal profile dot name dot given name. Facebook, if you look at the API, I'll show you a little bit later uh, how you can find out that information. Um, that's the first name. Plus, uh, let's do a space, you know. And then profile dot name dot family name. That will be the last name. And then one more thing here will be our email. So uh, dot email equals profile dot emails, and it's in an it comes back in an array. So we're gonna get take the first email that is given, and then dot value. The last thing we do need to do here is to save our new user. So we'll do new user dot save. And then uh, it takes in a function that returns an error if there is an error saving uh, the user. So if uh, error, go ahead and throw that error. And otherwise, return done, no error, and our new user. We'll go ahead and save that file and do some testing. Actually, everything is done except for just a couple of HTML changes. Uh, we need to change our views so the user can click the Facebook button. And then once they do, uh, we want to be able to put on our profile page the information that we've gotten from Facebook, uh, just like we did on our local login. So let's go to our index here. And so we'll have a login button, a sign up button, and then we're going to have a Facebook uh, login button. So we'll add that. This is just normal HTML. We'll save that, and then on our profile page, I've got a little uh, um, HTML we're gonna copy and paste in here. So we'll copy that, and we'll just insert it here. It's basically the same HTML that we used for our local, except we're bringing in Facebook.id and token and email and name instead of our local uh, information. So let's uh, save that, and then we'll now we're gonna do some testing. Okay, two bugs so far that I've found. Uh, the first uh, one was some brackets and uh, parentheses that were extra right here. Just make sure that uh, with all these brackets and parentheses that everything lines up correctly. Um, I believe they were on line 99 originally, just in case you're following my code exactly. Um, and then uh, also we needed to import our Facebook strategy that we installed with NPM earlier. So at the very top of your document here on Passport.js, make sure you add a var Facebook strategy equals require and of course Passport uh, dash Facebook and then dot strategy. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is test our application. So let's go ahead and go to node server.js and we'll be running. So we'll go to navigate to localhost 8080. You'll see that we have our Facebook button here. We'll click here. 
Now, the first time you do this, you may have an error and it'll say, you know, it's you can't connect or something like that. I want you to go back to your developer panel and uh, for your application and go to settings and you'll need to add, um, you'll click add platform and you'll go to website. And then what you'll do is under the site URL, you'll add HTTP slash slash localhost. And then uh, once you do that, you can add an app domain uh, localhost and then the save the changes. Um, the reason that the error is happening is that uh, Facebook wants to know who is sending them traffic beforehand uh, because it doesn't want an unauthorized person sending them traffic. So we have to register that our app is sending them the traffic and it, it only comes from our app. Uh, so once you do that, uh, you'll be able to log in and then you're going to see this uh, page pop up. This is our authenticity page, our authentication page for Facebook. It's basically saying we're going to receive uh, the application that we, uh, you know, our website wants to receive our public profile, basically email, username, birthday, you know, just some basic simple stuff. Uh, so once you do that, um, click OK. And then we should be redirected back to our home page. Um, and in this case we're not so let's find the error okay so the error I was getting was uh, new user .facebook emails and then it was looking at the email section and saying that it couldn't read the property zero of undefined so why would it be getting all the way to the bottom of this um, and without throwing an error but when it got to emails uh, it threw an error well that's because uh, Emails is evidently not brought in by just the regular profile. You actually have to add additional permissions to pull uh, the email from a user's Facebook profile. To add extra permissions, all you have to do, it's actually pretty simple, is go back to our routes.js file where we're sending data to Facebook. And we're going to add an object here that has a scope. Um, and all we're gonna do is this for the scope is add email to it. Actually, it's a uh, it, it, it needs an array that has a uh, email in it. Uh, so go ahead and save that. Uh, rerun our server here, and let's test it. So refresh Facebook. It's gonna say now we have to, or now it's asking again for permissions because we're adding something new. Uh, once uh, it's asking the user whether or not we want to give our email address to our application. So we'll click yes, okay. We get redirected back to our profile page with our ID, uh, this long token that Facebook gives us. Um, and then we actually need to refresh. Uh, this actually is getting sent, uh, but because we didn't. We already had a user in the database. It didn't update, so uh, we'll fix that here in a second. So since we're just testing uh, this application, just go ahead and delete all the users from your database that you've created so far, and then uh, re-log in with Facebook. Um, and this time, you'll see the email uh, updated. Uh, so with that said, this tutorial is finished. Let's just talk a little bit about documentation. Okay, so there's two places you're going to find information over the content provided in this tutorial. In the first place is the Passport uh, website uh, under Facebook Providers. You're going to find pretty much the same information that we've already used in this tutorial. I've pretty much copied and used uh, the information for the tutorial. Uh, so that's a good place to start. You just have to edit some stuff that uh, to suit your own needs. And then the next place is the uh, Facebook API uh, site. So you'll go to developers.facebook.com. At the very bottom, you'll see uh, APIs and SDKs. And in this section, we're basically using the Graph API. Um, so you can find some information here on usages and how to request things like user photos and stuff like that for your API. Now notice that Passport is basically only used uh, for authentication. So if you're looking for something to reference or get pictures from Facebook and stuff like that, you're going to want to use some other things and in future tutorials I may talk about that. Uh, but know that uh, at least for what we're requesting, uh, the Graph API is good to check out. Uh, references and also um, other APIs you might want to check out. So thanks for watching this tutorial. I know it's been a little bit long this time. Uh, but the next one we're going to talk about is uh, the Google 
uh, API uh, with Passport. So uh, stay tuned and catch you, catch you guys next time. Oh my gosh, I can't talk this tutorial. I am done. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.